In this video, we are going to color these rock patterns. Now, in order to scatter these patterns across the surface, we use the shape splatter node. And the shape splatter has a height as an output, but it also contains this splatter data one and two RGBA outputs. These channels contain specific information such as the pattern UV, X, and Y coordinates, as well as the B box width and height. These outputs can be used with companion nodes to the shape splatter to allow us to colorize these patterns that we're feeding into the shape splatter node. So what we're going to do, let's just move all the way over here to where we're working on our base color. And I'm gonna hit the space bar and do a search for shape. And here you'll see that we have this node here, like I said, as a companion node to the shape splatter. This is the shape splatter blend color. And we're gonna use this to colorize our patterns. So I'm gonna left click to create this node. And we'll zoom in here and you can see that uh, there are several inputs. The first one is this background color. We are going to start here with the base color that we created in the previous video. So I'm just gonna take the output of this blend and plug it right here into the background color. So now we need to feed in our splatter data for the specific shape splatter node that we wanna work with. So we'll just zoom out here and uh, what we're gonna start with is the pebbles small. So I'll grab splatter data one, and then I can just zoom back out here to my node and we'll plug this guy into here. Now uh, we also need to grab uh, splatter data two. So I'll just left click uh, just to bring out this connection line and then use my middle mouse button here to pan over and then plug this here into splatter data two. So now that we have this information, you can see that the next thing we can work with is a pattern input. So this is a color input. Now, if you recall, again, let's kind of zoom back and let's come all the way over here to our patterns. Uh, if you recall, for this shape splatter, we fed in three specific rock shape patterns and we wanna colorize each one of these a little differently. So we have three pattern inputs that we can work with. So let's come back here to our shape splatter. Let's come over here to the node and for the pattern input number, I'm gonna set this to an input value of three. Now I have three different color inputs that I can use to colorize these rocks. So now we need to start actually creating our color data. So I'm gonna start by creating a noise and I'm gonna hit my space bar and I'm just going to uh, default here to my clouds too. So I'm gonna grab uh, this node. Uh, then what I'm going to do is blend that with another grunge map. So we'll hit the uh, space bar, let's grab our blend here and we'll place uh, this clouds two in the background. Now for the foreground, uh, I'm just going to borrow this, uh, this grunge map 15 that we were using to, uh, within our roughness map creation. So I'll left click just to bring out this connection line and then I'm gonna feed this here into the foreground. So what I'm trying to do here is just build up a new noise or grunge map that I can then colorize using my gradient map just as we did for the ground in the previous video. So I can start here by just uh, lowering this opacity a bit. So we'll try, you know, just something like this. And then what I think I'll do is um, also do a search here for my high pass and just run this through a high pass. And again, the reason I'm doing this is just to uh, remove uh, some of these more contrasted areas. Uh, basically just kind of make this more of a kind of a uniform overall tone here. And then I can adjust my radius as well. Okay, so we're gonna go with something maybe more like this. And now what I can do that I have this grayscale information, I can uh, colorize it. So uh, I'm going to use that same technique that I did in the previous video where I'm gonna use my gradient map here. So we're gonna take the result of this high pass grayscale and plug that into our gradient map. So now I'm going to just grab some of my reference art that I have so far. I have some rocks here that I can uh, use to sample from. So let's grab our gradient editor and uh, once again, I'm just gonna use this pick gradient and then I'm just gonna sample just uh, some ranges here. So I'm gonna use this color. Now I'm gonna use this as my pattern input. So if we take a look at uh, the shape splatter, we have our pattern one. So let's take the result of this color and plug that right into the pattern one. We'll double click the shape splatter. Now if I zoom in here to my map, you can see, okay, now for that pattern one, uh, all the shapes that correspond to that pattern one are now been colored by this gradient map. So now we can see that we're able to place this data using the shape splatter blend color node. So now we just need to come in and create uh, another variation on this color. So what I'm gonna do here is just duplicate uh, this gradient map 
and just choose another color. So let's use my gradient editor, my pick gradient, and maybe this time I'll just sample this. So now I'm getting this color. So again, totally different color. Let's plug this here into pattern two and let's take a look at the result. We have colorized pattern one and pattern two and then pattern three, we haven't given it input, so it's black. So now let's uh, set up that pattern three. So let's just make a little room here and I'm going to select that gradient map, control D to duplicate it and then just sample uh, another rock here. So let's come into my pick gradient and this time I might just sample this area here. All right, so here you can see I have, you know, like I said, three different color values, and this is going to plug here into pattern three. And we'll take a look, and now we have all of the pebbles. Let's move this reference out of the way. So we have all of the pebbles that make up, and this is the one we're working with here, the small pebbles that we used with the shape splatter. This is the first one that we used to scatter these small pebbles, and we've colorized all of those. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do the large shapes. So again, if we go back to what we had underneath our pebbles, we broke this into two levels. So we had small and then we had large. I also want to make sure that I colorize uh, these three patterns that represent the, large, the larger pebbles. So what I'm going to do is just simply duplicate. So control D, this shape uh, splatter uh, blend color. Then I'm going to take the result of this color and plug that into the background color. So just as we did when we were creating our height, we were able to stack our shape splatter. We can actually stack these um, blend color versions as well. However, uh, what I need to do now is uh, just replace my pattern colors here. So I'm just going to uh, delete. And then I also need to uh, replace my splatter data, make sure that it lines up with the correct shape splatter node. So let's grab this splatter data one and we'll just move over here and put this into splatter data one and then here I will just grab that splatter data two and plug that in as well. Okay so now we have this set up correctly I can start to uh, create some additional color. Now if I wanted to I could come in and I could start to you know instead of using this exact same noise I could vary this a bit but I'm probably going to be a little bit lazy right now and just kind of keep continuing to use uh, this noise. So now I will just uh, create uh, some additional color patterns that I can use here. So let me grab my uh, reference art and I'm going to just duplicate my gradient maps again and just sample some more rocks here from this image. So maybe this time I'll, I'll try grabbing this guy and we'll throw this into pattern one. And again, we'll duplicate this, sample some more data. All right, so now we have another set of colors here. And if we take a look at the result, we've now colorized all of the pebbles. Okay, so let's now take uh, the results of this new base color map and plug that or pipe that here into our base material. So we'll do this here. And now here in our 3D view, you can see that we now have a lot of different color variation for all of these different rocks or pebbles that we scattered across our ground surface. Now, another thing that's kind of cool about this uh, shape splatter node, shape splatter blend color node, is I can also come into here and uh, further randomize this pattern assignment. So here you can see if I start to adjust this, I'll get different, uh, you know, it'll scatter those color patterns uh, differently and then get different results by just playing around with uh, this random value slider. So let's come over here and, and just, again, just kind of play around, see what we can come up with. So now, as you can see here, we're starting to get all of the color here for these pebbles uh, in place. And I can always go back here to uh, the grayscale map that's, that I'm using to colorize here and make changes to this as well. So again, uh, I may even come back and just kind of play around a little bit more with these values to kind of break this up even more and just get some more variation here that I can work with in each one of these color maps. Uh, that I'm using here to you know individually color each one of the patterns here for these rocks. All right, so uh, that is going to finish up our pebbles here. So in the next video, we're going to do the same thing, except now we're going to uh, color all the twigs that we have scattered across the surface.